This is Jack Sieber. I would like to demonstrate some of the new capabilities for linking WEEP and LEAP models. Let's look at a very simple energy and water system. On the water side, we have a single reservoir, a municipal demand, and demand for thermal cooling at a coal-fired power plant. The municipal demand has a higher priority. The hydropower from the reservoir and the cooling water demand indicate the need for a link to the energy system. On the energy side, we have just two processes for generating electricity, hydropower and the coal-fired power plant. Any shortfalls are made up from imports. The merit order for dispatch is hydropower first, then coal, and finally imports. We've entered the capacity for these plants, megawatts, and the monthly availability. In this scenario, we are not linked to WEEP, so we do not know the actual hydropower generated. Let's look at the results. All of the, the electricity comes from hydropower. Because it does, has no information from WEEP, we don't know if this is realistic or not. If we go to WEEP, let's look at the results for hydropower generated. Here we are in the same scenario, hydropower generation. You can see uh, quite a variation across the years. Uh, if we look at the monthly average, we can see it peaks in late summer. If we look at the annual total, we can see there is a variation from year to year. So it's no, by no means constant. So let's link the LEAP and WEAP models and see how that changes the results. Go back to LEAP. Now we'll go advanced option for linking to WEAP. I've already linked these models. So here you can see on the linkage screen, it's linked up the different scenarios and the different time steps. If we had not done this yet, this is the screen where we would make the linkage. So if we go back to the analysis view, and now we've got a new scenario, which is hydropower generation information will come from WEEP. And now if we're looking at the maximum availability for the hydropower, we're going to pull in a value from WEEP. So WEEP will calculate how much hydropower was generated in each month, and LEAP will get this value from WEEP. So the function here is called WEEP value, and it pulls in uh, the hydropower from that lake. This will affect the availability of hydropower in LEAP. As we can see below on the graph, for the years 2011 and 2014, the availability is much lower than 100%. And again, we can see it's peaking in August. If we look at the results, change to that scenario, now we can see for many months the electricity will come from coal steam, not for hydropower. If we want to compare the results, in January, we have 52 megawatts of hydropower. We look at the hydrogen scenario. Let's look at the table for 2014. You can see in January, we have 52.6 megawatts generated. 52.6. So you can see that this value is coming from WEEP. WEEP is informing LEAP how much hydropower is generated. And LEAP is using that to constrain and dispatch different processes. These results are for 2014. If we look at different years, we can see there is variability from year to year, depending on the actual hydropower generated. Now that we're showing generation from coal, let's look at how the cooling water demand for that coal-fired power plant has a feedback to WEEP. So let's go to WEEP. As you can see, there's cooling water demand below the reservoir, below the municipal demand for the power plant demand site, which is returned uh, to the river. So now there's a cooling water demand from LEAP scenario. So this will be getting the demand for cooling water will come from LEAP depending on how much uh, the coal-fired plant is, is used in LEAP. So if we look at the demand for the coal plant, we can see that in WEAP we're now getting a value from LEAP, which is how much power was dispatched from that coal, coal power plant. And here in the graph, we can see how this varies from year to year. In, in years where there's more electricity generated from the coal plant, we have a greater demand for cooling water. Let's see how this impacts the results. Here we're looking at the reservoir storage volume in red against the different reservoir zones for the hydropower generated scenario. Compared to the scenario where we now have a demand for cooling water, we can see that the reservoir level is dropping much lower due to that demand. Is the demand satisfied? If we look at the coverage re report, we can see that there are many months 
when the coverage is much less than 100%. So LEAP is asking for cooling water, which the model cannot satisfy. Let's go back to LEAP and see the impact on the results there. Let's see how that cooling water shortfall calculated by WEEP factors into the LEAP calculations. Go back to LEAP, Analysis View, switch to the cooling water demand from LEAP scenario, and look at the maximum availability. So the coal process, we can now see it's getting a value from, from WEEP, which is the coverage for the coal power plant demand site. And we can see below that in several of the years, the coverage is indeed below 100%, which caused the availability to drop below the, the average of 70%. Now we can look at results. Let's change from the hydro generation scenario to the cooling water demand scenario. Now we can see a change in this introduction now of imports. In 2014, there's insufficient water to meet the cooling water demand, in which case the coal-fired plant can only run to a certain capacity, and the shortfall will now come from imports. Finally, let's look at one other linkage between the energy and water systems. The water sector uses electricity for pumping, for treatment, for moving water around, and other purposes. Let's model that in WEEP, which will vary depending on how much water is moved, pumped, and treated. Go back to WEEP. We'll create a new scenario called Electricity Demand from WEEP. And we'll look at two different types of demands. One on transmission links. So we have a variable that describes the electricity needed for per cubic meter. So this is for pumping or treatment. And here we have 500 watt hours. And the total electricity will be a function of that electricity intensity times the actual flow in this transmission link. If this is coming from groundwater, it could represent pumping. It also could represent treatment of the water for use. And here we can see quite a large demand. These are millions of kilowatt hours. We can also do the same thing for wastewater treatment plants. Electricity per cubic meter and the total electricity. Finally, we can sum these up with a key assumption for electricity use in the water sector. So you have an expression that sums up the total electricity from the transmission links and the total electricity from the wastewater treatment plants. And here we can see how it varies month to month and year to year. Now if we go back to the leap side, if we go to, back to the analysis view, and now we switch to the scenario electricity demand from WEEP, and we look at the demand, there's a branch for demand from the water sector, the final energy intensity, now we can see is a WEEP value expression. From that key assumption for electricity use by the water sector from WEEP, and pulling it in, and here we can see what's the energy demand from the water sector. And we can see it changes from year to year. If we look at results, and compare across scenarios, we can see that the electricity demand from WEEP scenario, there is going to be year to year variation, whereas the other scenarios, it's just a simple straight line that does not take into account the changing electricity needs from the water sector.